In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this awesome strawberry hat. Hi, this is Anastasia from AnastasiaPopova.com and CrochetForBabies.com. Thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this awesome strawberry hat. The hat could be finished as a beanie or a sun hat. The pattern is written in four sizes, from newborn to five-year-old. In this video, I'm showing how to crochet toddler size. I really like strawberry hats with tiny seeds like real strawberries have, but I do not enjoy sewing the little things on, so I came up with this technique. This pattern is probably best suited for someone who has a little bit of experience crocheting. It uses basic stitches like single crochet and double crochet, chain and slip stitch. Also adjustable ring. It has increases crocheting in the round and you will need to know some basic sewing to attach the leaves. Materials. You will need cotton, medium or worsted weight yarn in red, green and white. I like lilies and cream or sugar and cream that's available in big box stores like Joann's, Michael's or AC Moore. It is an inexpensive yarn and you can make this hat for under $5 if you use coupons. Link in the description if you enjoy the convenience of online shopping. Hook. You will need US size H 5mm crochet hook or a hook necessary to obtain gauge and a yarn needle. You will also need the pattern for which you can find a link in the description box below. Construction. This strawberry hat is worked from the top down. Increases are made to shape the crown and then the hat is worked straight down. Leaves are made separately and will need to be sewn on after. Let's get started. To create seeds with white yarn, tie knots every two to three inches. I already have two knots tied. I'm gonna just continue this. I found this to be an easier way of creating seeds on strawberry beanie than embroidering white knots or sewing beads on. So I like to get started with a few yards of this. You can always tie more knots as you crochet in the hat. Because you will be adding those knots starting with round four and doing it every other round. What you could do is basically spiral some of this yarn out to see how many rounds it will give you. So one, two, three, four, so maybe a couple of more knots and I can get started with the beanie. Depending on the size you're making, obviously for some sizes you will need more knots, seeds than for others. Okay, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay, 15 knots. So now I can set this aside. And I'm going to start working on the crown. I'm using 5mm crochet hook and worsted weight red yarn. I'm going to start this with an adjustable ring. You can look at my other video on how to do this in details. So now I'm going to chain two and make 10 double crochet into the center of the ring. One, 
yarn over the hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go in. Um, just remember when you're working into the adjustable ring, you have to make all of your stitches over the two strands, making sure that you have them over the short end. So you don't run out of space there. Otherwise the adjustable ring is not really going to work. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we count the chain two, as it tells us in the instruction, uh, in the instructions, I have eleven stitches total. So now I'm going to pull tail to tighten the ring and slip stitch into top of chain two to join round. So how do you find that space where you're supposed to slip stitch? So find your first double crochet, then the top of it, this will be the two strands here, and then you go one step back. This is the last chain, the two of the two, so one, two, and this is where you're going to slip stitch. I like to insert my hook through two strands, one, two, and then yarn over, pull up a loop. So this is my slip stitch. Now I'm going to do round two. For round two, chain two and work two double crochet and each stitch around. We're gonna do this ten times. One. Double crochet back into the same spot. That's two double crochet in one spot. Then in the next stitch I'm going to put two double crochet. And two in the next one. Alright, so I've made two double crochet in each stitch around. Then it tells me to double crochet into a slip stitch. So the slip stitch, uh, it looks just like a double crochet from before, if you look at the tops. So it looks the same two strands, like a regular V stitch. But if you look down here, you will see that here you have actual double crochet stitches. And here it's uh, two chains and that's where the starting chain of round two begins. So this is actually a slip stitch from a previous round that used to join this round together. So the last double crochet of the round is going to go right here. And we're only doing it because the instruction tells us to. And we're only going to be doing this in the increase rounds. Alright, so now that I have double crochet into the slip stitch, I'm going to slip stitch on top of chain 2 to join round 2. And again, let me show you how to find, how to identify that top of chain 2. So you find a double crochet, top of it, 
and one step back and we insert the hook on the two strands. Okay, round two is complete. Round three, chain two, two double crochet, um, sorry, double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochet in the next one. So the instruction tells us after the initial sequence of double crochet in the next stitch to the next one, repeat the sequence nine more times. So you're gonna have a total of ten repeats. So this was one, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Then double crochet in the next stitch and double crochet into the slip stitch. And then slip stitch on top of chain two to join round. Round three is complete. Now before I begin round four, I need to find my white yarn with all the knots and align the white yarn with the top edge of the crown. Now I'm going to begin round four. Chain two, double crochet in the next two stitches, two double crochet in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat this ten times total. So double crochet in the next stitch, then in the next one. So one double crochet next to two stitches, and then two double crochet in the next one. Okay, as you can see, I am holding the white strand along the edge, and I'm pulling it kind of back a little bit. I'm sort of pulling it to the back of my work, placing it not all the way at the top of the edge, but slightly aligned with it, because I don't want it to show too much through the stitches. Double crochet in the next two stitches, two double crochet in the next one. Double crochet in the next stitch, in the next one. And then two in the next stitch. Once you get to the seed, the knot you made in the white yarn, just push it to the front of your work, leaving the white thread behind the stitches. Unless you want the white strand to show through. Okay. 
So see the seed is sticking out, but the white thread a little bit here. But for the most part, it's on the back of the work, so it's not really showing through. Continuing the same matter of double crocheting the next two stitches. Two double crochet in the next one. And we're doing this sequence ten times total. So from the instruction nine more times. And again, once I got to the knot, I'm just going to push it forward. Make sure that the white strand is flowing freely between the stitches, so it's not pulling your work together. It's better to have it loose. Well, it's better to have it evenly spaced with the work, but if you must do it looser rather than tighter. Because crochet stitches have some stretch, especially when they work at a loose gauge like that. And you don't want the work to be tightened by the strand of yarn here. Okay, so I think I have a have ten repeats. Let me just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, then I'm going to double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, and double crochet into the slip stitch. And then I need to slip stitch to join it together. Okay, so I have this knot here that will be positioned into the slip knot. I can't really pull. Let's see how I can position it here. Okay, it's okay. There we go. This is gonna stay here with the slip stitch. All right, so I'm ready to do round five. For round five, I do not need to do the seeds, so I'm just going to drop it to the back of my work and I will pick it up in round six. Um, I'm making size for one to three year olds, so for round five, for my size, check the instructions to follow um, the pattern for the size that you're making because that's where the shaping happens and different number of stitches are created. So for my size, for round five, I chain two, double crochet in the next six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, then two double crochet in the next stitch and I'm going to repeat this five more times, so total of six times. Two, three, four, five, six, 
to double crochet in the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, two in the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, two in the next one. one okay so I'm just gonna double check how many repeats I've done okay. one two three four five so I need one more repeat One, two, three, four, five, six, two in the next double crochet, then double crochet in the next stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch it together. Note how I did not put a stitch into the slip stitch. Once decreases are complete, we are not going to be crocheting into the slip stitch. You have to stop with the last double crochet. I will point it out once we're doing the next round as well that we're not working into the slip stitch here. It actually helps to tighten the slip stitch. This is what I like to do. So if you hold your working yarn very very tightly and then you pull the hook so all the pulling happens at the slip knot. Did you see how it got much much tighter? So this way the slip stitch does not look like the regular stitches. It looks much, much tighter. This way you're not going to be inclined to put the stitch in here. Plus if you tighten it in this manner you're not going to have holes here because sometimes there's a tendency to have a hole between the last double crochet and the beginning chain two so to avoid that I like to tighten it together all right so for round six I am going to use the white strand again to put the seeds here so I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to start crocheting over the strand. For the round six after chain two I'm just double crocheting in each stitch around and then slip stitches stitch to join it together. So again I'm holding the white strand uh, together the at the top edge of uh, previous round but all the way at the top because I don't like the white showing through I try to hold it to the back it doesn't always work sometimes it still peaks it does add uh, an extra effect to the seeds it makes it appear kind of like the smallest seeds of the strawberries if you will but I don't like too much of it showing So 
So round five was the last round where we did the increases. After that, the width of the circumference of the hat is not going to change. So I'm almost at the end of the round. Okay, my last double crochet needs to be worked on top of the double crochet. I am not putting a stitch into the slip stitch. So here's my chain two, here's the slip stitch that's tightened, here's a double crochet, I have a double crochet on top of it, now I'm going to slip stitch it together. And then I'm going to tighten it. So I'm holding the yarn tight and pulling with the hook. And then adjusting the loop. So this was round six. I'm going to repeat round six five more times. So I'm going to chain two, double crochet in each stitch around, slip stitch at the end. Um, while you do this, make sure you using the white yarn you every other row. So on row seven, round seven, we're not gonna do it, but on row eight, make sure to put the beads on. So I will see you once you have all rounds of the crown completed and we will do the edging or uh, the sun hat brim. So I have 11 rounds of the hat completed. Um, if I were to make a beanie I would fasten off main color right now and work edging with the white. But I'm making the sun hat so I will be working the sun hat, uh, the sun hat brim. So I'm going to start with row one of the brim. And so I'm going to start the first round of the brim. Chain two, double crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, 
three, four, and two double crochet in the next stitch. So for this round I'm making double crochet in the next four stitches and two double crochet in the next one. And I'm repeating this nine times total, so eight more times since the first repeat, after the first repeat. I'm just going to check how many times I've repeated this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. That's eight. And obviously you follow the instructions for the size you're making. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's nine times. Then I'm going to double crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, four and a double crochet into the slip stitch just like we did for the increased portion of the crown and slip stitch together for the next round I need to include the white yarn to create the seeds Okay, so I'm going to chain two at the beginning. Then the sequence is double crochet in the next five stitches, two double crochet in the next stitch. So double crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, five then two double crochet in the next stitch four, five, and then two, and 
one, two, three, four, five, two, And I am repeating the sequence nine times total. And two in the next one. I need one more seed here. Okay, so now that I have sequence repeated nine times, have nine repeats, um, double crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and then a double crochet into the slip stitch. and slip stitch it to join together so at this point just turn it okay so we have decreases for the brim the hat so at this point I can fasten off the main color and do edging in white if you were to do the beanie you would do the edge in white but you would be at this point so to fasten off red and switch to white so with the main color loop on my hook 
I'm going to yarn over white and pull it through the loop on your hook and then pull the red yarn until it completely disappears so I only have white loop on. So and I'm going to make one more chain with white. So by pulling the red color away I kind of created a knot to secure the transition and now I have white on my hook. So from here I can work the reverse single crochet edging around the hand. For the reverse single crochet instead of working into regular direction uh, from right to left for right handed I will be working from left to right now kind of backwards that's why it's called reverse single crochet. To make the stitch insert the hook under two strands of the next stitch just like for regular single crochet and then the hook goes over the yarn and then I'm going to pull the loop through the fabric to create two loops on the hook see how they're twisted and then yarn over go through two loops on the hook okay one more time insert the hook under two strands of the next stitch hook over the yarn pull the loop through two loops on the hook yarn over go through two Um, the biggest mistake that people make with this stitch is when they're pulling the loop through the fabric, they sometimes pull it through the loop they have on the hook in one motion. And that does not create the same stitch as you can see. So make sure that you form the two twisted loops on the hook. So once you work this round, the hat is complete, everything just needs to be fastened off and the leaves need to be made. And we work in the reverse single crochet all the way around the head.
so it works all the way around um, now I'm going to fasten off okay to fasten off just cut yarn giving you a few inches just enough to hide the yarn afterwards uh, extend the loop until the yarn comes out and then using your needle So I like to simulate the last row of stitches when I fasten off. So I will overlap this stitch with the beginning one. So I'm going to start by inserting the needle right about here, so after the chain. And I'm pushing the hook from front to back. I'm sorry, pushing the needle from front to back. And then back up. And back to the work to the back of the work. Okay, from here I can weave in the end. I like to hide white in white and not in red so the yarn doesn't show through. Okay. And after a few stitches I can just cut the remainder. With the red I'm just going to weave in the end so it's hidden. So from here we're going to do the leaves and attach them to the back of the head. Okay, so now I'm going to make stem and leaves. I'm using green yarn and the same hook. So I'm going to start with the slip knot and chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now slip stitch in 4th chain from the hook and next 6 chains. 1, 2, 3. So I'm inserting my hook just on the top strand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in the last chain, I'm going to make six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those six single crochet will create the base of the leaf. Okay, so for the first leaf, for each leaf, I'm going to start by chaining seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then single crochet in the third chain from hook. And next chain then half double crochet into the next chain yarn over the hook insert the hook into the next chain yarn over pull up a loop with three loops on the hook yarn over go through all three that's half double and then double crochet in the next two chains and then i'm going to slip stitch in next single crochet of the base to connect this leaf to to the to the leaf and to to this piece. So this portion is a little tricky because I'm slip stitching it into the very 
first single crochet, the one that starts right after the stem. The next leaf I will be slip stitching into the next single crochet. So again, seven chains, then single crochet into the third chain, and next one, then half double, and double crochet in the next two. And connect, slip stitch into the next single crochet of the base. Chain 7. Single crochet in the third chain. Next, half double crochet. Double crochet in the next. And then the next. And slip stitch again. And the next leaf. Chain four, five, six, seven. Single crochet, single crochet, half double crochet, double, double. And slip stitch. Chain seven, single crochet, single crochet, half double, 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 and slip stitch. And one more, chain seven, single crochet, single crochet, half double crochet, half double, not double, half double crochet, and double crochet. And connect with the slip stitch. Okay. So I have stem and six leaves, so I can fasten this off. Um, when you fasten this portion off, leave a long tail, maybe like 10 12 inches, because you will be using this yarn tail to attach the leaves to the top of the hat. Okay, fasten off. So extend the loop until the end comes all the way through. Okay, so now I'm going to attach this to the top of the hat. So where we did So I'm going to attach it, the leaves to the top of the hat. Um, I will be using the back stitch. Um, I'm centering the slip stitch um, portion of this of the leaf round with the first round of the crown. Okay, so I'm inserting the the, uh, the needle back, through, forward, then back, Again, it goes, the needle goes back and then forward. Okay. 
me show you what it looks like on the inside. I'm all the way around so I'm gonna insert the needle all the way through and secure so I'm gonna make a French knot and to secure the yarn to the back of the work and weave in the end If you want, you could secure the leaves to the hat. I prefer to have them sticking out a little bit, so I will leave it like this. So it's a personal preference. So once all the ends are weaved in, the hat is ready. Happy wearing! Thank you for joining me today.